David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. I say this a lot, but one of my favorite things about the fountain pen hobby is making new discoveries. And today I have a pen for you available through Galen Leather, but it was from a small Turkish manufacturer that I was not familiar with. So it's been interesting getting to know a little bit about the company and what they do. The name of the company is Studio Agakakan. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. And the pen is called the V1. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Galen Leather who have been very generous over the years for providing this pen for review. The pen arrives in this box, uh, and there's a lot of extra stuff in here as well. Um, most of the time when you order from Galen Leather, they include a little zippered pouch here like this. Uh, it's a nice little extra when you don't drop it. Uh, inside we have a few things. Um, there is a uh, nice little letter telling the story of the, about the company. There is a postcard. Uh, there is a 10% off coupon. Uh, there is a couple of packages of uh, Turkish tea. Uh, if you didn't know, Galen Leather is based out of Turkey. Uh, and then one of my favorite things that they include most of the time is an evil eye, which helps ward off evil spirits, which is helpful. Um, I have collected a few of these over the years and have them hanging around my office in various places. Uh, you never know when those evil spirits will try to sneak in. Uh, there is also an Agakagan branded polishing cloth here with their Woodpecker logo on it. Uh, and then there is a canvas uh, pouch which can hold a pen. Uh, and then there is also a Galen uh, leather pen sleeve. Um, I told you there was a lot of extra stuff that came in here. And then we actually have the pen itself, which is in this box. Uh, Galen Leather has always done a great job with the look of their packaging. Uh, they're a good example of providing cool looking packaging that doesn't cost a lot to produce. This slides off and lifts up and inside we have a pen. This is the Agakakan V1 and the material is Earth Magic from Jonathan Brooks. Um, this pen is actually available in over 30 different versions, some using other Jonathan Brooks resins and others made from ebonite. Uh, it's a pretty extensive selection. Uh, Agakikan is based out of Turkey, and the gentlemen behind the brand are Mert and Mehmet. Uh, they are close friends who decided to go into business together to make fountain pens. The name Agakikan means woodpecker in Turkish, uh, and that name comes from their love of bringing life to pieces by shaping objects, uh, fine workmanship, small touches, like a woodpecker. Their goal is to convey Turkish motifs to fountain pen lovers across the world. Um, they strive to create pens that tell stories and are inspired by the elements of culture, art, and history. They have started attending a number of international pen shows. Um, I noticed that they have a table at the upcoming DC show, and I'm looking forward to meeting them and getting a closer look at some of their other offerings. Uh, getting back to the pen at hand, uh, here's something rather interesting that shows how custom resins can vary. All three of these pens are variations on Jonathan Brooks' Earth Magic material. Uh, the top is a Carolina Pen Company Charleston, the middle is a Leonardo Fig Boot on Pens Memento Zero, and the bottom is the Agakakan V1. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite version of this material is between the three. Um, I know what mine is, and I'll let you know which it is during the size comparisons. Uh, the colors on this resin of this pen are, are a bit more blended and creamier than the other versions. Um, there's still a fair amount of pearlescence in both the blue and darker copper, but it's rather subtle. Um, as with custom resins of this type, no two pens are going to look the same. Um, some will have more blue, some will have more copper. Uh, it's whatever the resin gods decide. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it is flat and inlaid with a round metal piece engraved with a special image. The image is of Zeynep Perens uh, and her son, Sean. 
Uh, it's taken from this picture of them together. If you're not familiar, Zeynep was the founder of Galen Leather, and after she succumbed to an extended illness, her husband Yunus and brother Yusuf took over the reins of the company and have done a great job maintaining Zeynep's legacy. Uh, I'm sure that she would be proud of what the company has become. Uh, the cap angles up until about this portion here where it straightens out. Uh, there's no cap band or external branding on this pen other than the uh, top of the cap. Uh, there is a small step down from the cap to the barrel, which is straight for about an inch before tapering down to the end, which is flat. The cap twists off in just over one rotation, and underneath we have a gold-plated number six Yovo nib. On the nib, it is engraved with the same logo found at the top of the cap. Um, I find it a little interesting that the orientation of the logo is different than on most other pens. Most other nib engraving is flipped the other way around. Nothing wrong with that, it's just an interesting decision and a little bit different. The nib is available in either extra fine, fine, medium, broad, or a 1.1 stub. And then for an additional cost, there is a number of other italic, oblique, and gold options for the nib as well. Uh, the one I have right here is an oblique broad, so uh, look forward to the writing sample where I can show you what this nib can do. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with the flare, and then angles up until you reach the cap threads, then there is a bit of a straight portion before you reach the medium-sized step up to the remainder of the barrel. The pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. The cap does post. I can't say that it posts that deeply and it does add a bit of length to the pen. I can't say that I'm fond of the look when it's posted either, but the cap is very light and it doesn't backweight the pen or throw off the balance. So if you like to post your pens, then this pen will accommodate that. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Uh, with no internal metal parts, uh, with the appropriate amount of silicone grease, then eye dropping this pen should work just fine. Uh, the Agaka Can V1 is available exclusively on the Galen Leather website. I'll put a link to it in the notes below, as well as a link to the Studio Agaka Can site as well. I'd encourage you to check out what they have going on there as well. On the Galen site, uh, this pen sells for $195, which is in the appropriate range for an artisan resin pen with a custom resin like this. Um, I like this offering, and there are some other models on the Agakikan site that I look forward to checking out in person at the DC show. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with the size comparisons for the Studio Agaka Can V1. Uh, to begin with, I wanted to show it with those other versions of Earth Magic as well. This is the Leonardo Memento Zero Fig on Pens. Uh, and then this is a Carolina Pen Company uh, Charleston. So between the two, the three of these, you can see how they're somewhat similar, but they have varying amounts of copper in them. Um, of the three, I have to say that this one is my favorite, the Charleston. Um, the blue is just really vibrant and pops, and I really like the copper contrast here. For my pen, uh, I actually, uh, Jonathan and I, and I toned down the copper because I really wanted the blue elements, um, but I didn't want, so when, you, when you have custom resins, there's gonna be variation. And there might be one pen that has a lot of copper and not so much blue. So I wanted to have them more consistent. So we increased the amount of blue and decreased the copper. You can see it's still there though. Um, but overall, just for this specific pen, I just think this is a perfect combination. Now, if we could have every one turn out like this, uh, I would have done that in a second. Uh, but uh, but that's why I ended up uh, going with more of a blue here because I wanted more consistency. And you can see how the one here, the Agaka can is a little bit more creamy uh, with a little bit more uh, blue as well. Uh, in regard to one other pen, this is the Rose Gold Demonstrator from Narwhal, which is available for, from Galen Leather as well. That's one of their exclusives. 
In regard to a couple of other size comparisons, we have the Visconti Homo Sapiens. We have the Pilot Custom 823. Uh, and then we have another pen from Turkey, which is a company, a pen from a company called Kilk, which I've really enjoyed. Um, and this one is called the Celestial. So uh, Turkey is doing a good job in making some high quality writing instruments. In regard to uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the 823 and the Homo sapien, and then here it is with the Memento Zero. You can see those are fairly similar in size. So here we go with the writing sample for the Studio, and how they spell this is S-T-U-D-Y-O, and Agakakan, which is A G A C K. A K A N. Uh, and this is an oblique broad nib. Uh, and that if um, uh, you don't know what an oblique broad is, most normal nibs will say are rounded on the end. Uh, and that an oblique nib is going to have an angle to it. So it goes up and then it's just more of a, an angle to that particular nib. And so it almost uh, is better to write with when the pen is slightly angled a little bit to the left. Uh, and that for me personally, I have a tendency to write that way. So I should probably get more obliques uh, in my collection because I have a tendency to twist it a little bit. Um, and that this uh, oblique writes very well in that situation. The ink that I'm using here today is an exclusive from Galen Leather, and that would be Robert Oster. And this would be Sooty Shearwater. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, Sooty Shearwater is uh, actually the name of a bird. Uh, it is taken directly from a quote from Zynap, one of her favorite quotes that she wanted to be remembered by. Um, this is what it looks like in comparison to Leonardo Smeraldo, as well as Stilo and Stile's Roman Bronze Oxidation. Uh, it's along those same lines, but a little bit lighter. This is what the Robert Oster bottles look like, nice and large. You can get uh, any nib in there at all. Okay, here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Now with a nib like this, it is going to have a much smaller sweet spot to where if you're not holding it correctly, like if I hold it straight up and down, you can see that it's just literally not writing. But if I angle it correctly, then it writes just fine. Uh, and so you're not gonna get a lot of line variation in here, but you need to be more attentive to actually how you're holding this pen. In regard to ink flow, it's decent. Uh, and we're going to reverse writing. I don't know how this is going to work. Maybe I have to hold it opposite backwards. Yeah. That's a bit of a challenge. Uh, and in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up nicely. So. Here we have the Studio Agakakan V1, uh, available through Galen Leather. Uh, I think uh, I really like this material. It's really nice, and it, uh, it's interesting to get to learn some more about uh, a new company. And like I mentioned, I did see that they were going to be in D.C., and they have some other really interesting pens on their site. So I look forward to taking a closer look at it and being, uh, also meeting the people behind the brand. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.